position on torture is exactly the position on torture that you find in the, the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, right? And, and one, one thing that's happening to me now in conversations like this and in, you know, on many topics is that much of, much of my discussions have not to do with policy, but are, have been an effort to get at ethical bedrock. I mean, I write and think as a philosopher. Mm -hmm. And in, in, a, in, in the context of having a philosophical discussion about ethics and right and wrong, you can say many things that seem crazy outside of a, right. a philosophy seminar, but in a philosophy seminar are totally legitimate. So in a philosophy seminar, you could say, you know, why can't we eat babies? What's wrong with eating babies? If we've right. got extra babies around that nobody wants, why can't we eat them, right? That is a completely insane thing to say in the world, mm -hmm. s mm -hmm. seemingly. That's the kind of thing that if quoted out of context, you know, if, if Glenn Greenwald decides to tweet, you know, Sam Harris can't, can't figure out why we can't eat babies, right? It makes me look like an asshole. But the reality is, is that if you're talking about, if you're trying to get to the bedrock about the the the, the ethics of, of of good and evil and the use of force, if you're trying to just then then starting the conversation with why can't we eat babies? You know, what, what, give me an ethical argument about why this is really really wrong. Why our intuitions of its wrongness is is, is can be conserved. That is a totally legitimate thing to do, and there's not a philosopher on earth who would think you were a weirdo for having that conversation. Mm -hmm. So much of my discussion, I mean, I, so I don't tend to write down to my readers, and much of my discussion of things like, like nuclear deterrence and torture and, uh, and all of these, these very inflammatory issues, uh, or the, 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 the biggest one is the link between belief and action, killing right. people for their beliefs, right? right? Um, Th those are those are had in the context of a very extensive conversation in in philosophical terms about how do we get to ethical bedrock? What what makes it right to kill Osama bin Laden? How how is it right? Is it right by virtue of all the people he's killed? Well, no, because we're not even sure he personally killed anyone, right? Is it right by virtue of all the people that Al Qaeda killed already? Well. Why? Because killing Osama bin Laden doesn't bring them back to life. It doesn't help anybody who's already been killed. It doesn't help their families. No, it makes sense based on what he's aspiring to do in the future. All the people he, we're going to hopefully prevent from being killed. So when you get to the bottom of that, as I was doing in this discussion about the link between belief and behavior, I am saying that you, in that case, you really are bombing his beliefs, right? It, 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 it's the, the fact that you are sure he believes what he says he believes and that those beliefs are going to lead to action, right? You're not bombing beliefs that aren't going to lead to action. It's the measure of the strength of the belief that connects it to action. It's an extensive conversation about the nature of belief and what beliefs are as programs of action. And, and I can defend every part of that argument, but it's hard to defend it when someone says, oh, you're just trying to kill people for thought crimes. No, I'm trying to get to an ethical justification for why it was okay to kill Osama bin Laden uh, if we couldn't capture him. I'm not even someone who thinks he should have been killed. I think he should have been captured. But if we couldn't capture him, killing him made sense not as retribution, as many people think. I mean, that, the, the logic of retribution makes absolutely no ethical sense to me. But it, it makes sense to prevent further harm. And when you look at the micro details of how you think you're preventing further harm, you were talking about what he believed and what he was going to do on the basis of his beliefs. And again, I'm paying a massive penalty for trying to have a fine-grained, intelligent, and quasi-academic discussion, uh, and it's getting exported onto Twitter and into the minds of people like Glenn Greenwald and Reza Aslan, who don't either don't want to engage with my argument closely enough to understand it, or they're quite happy, happy to cynically mislead people as to what I'm actually saying. And I think it's in, in their case, I think it's, it's the latter. But there are many people who are just confused by the norms of of philosophical ethical discourse, and, and they just don't say, well, how could you, how could you even be talking about eating babies, you, 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 you monster, right? Right. That th these people don't know what it's like to be in a philosophy seminar, and that's, and that is largely um, uh, the problem we're dealing with here, and it, it's, it's, it's made especially excruciating because many of these conversations abut public policy, right? So when you're talking about the ethics of torture, you're talking, you're, you're having that conversation in a world where there are people like. Dick Cheney, who are trying to figure out, you know, whether we can uh, have a policy of rendition, et cetera, et cetera. I, 